Peace and Power Drop Nation, man. We are back on track. Much a hop to y'all, man. This is the third wave. Again, man. Much love. A hop, man. A hop, man. To the real ones. I appreciate y'all, man, for being, uh, you know, just uh, guaranteed flow, steady water. You know what I mean? When you need it the most, you know what I mean? This is how you know, man, that the tribe is real and the vibe is real. And all the love, all the support. You know what I mean, it goes a long way, man, you know what I'm saying, stuff is real, man, this is real, this is all real talk over here, man, so, you know, we're gonna keep it to the classroom, we're gonna keep the confusion out, we're gonna keep the static out, we're gonna be nine above, I hop to my Shabbat, I truly love y'all, I hop to all y'all for the wonderful comments, man, the great support, you know what I mean, hey, you know, we are prisoners of war, so we are already at war, so it's not about being distracted and all that, man. It's been a frequency war, so this sh this shit ain't new. So don't act like there's nothing new coming on. And oh no, the community, nah, man. We've been at war, man. You understand? So you know, the static will always, you know, what I'm saying, you know, always be, you know, all in your uh, pants. You know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta get the static out your pants. You know what I mean? And uh, to keep walking. Remember, David walked on water. And we are the water, man. A high, man. I want to give uh, much a high, man. An appreciation, man. To everyone who's kept the radio flowing and the radio going by becoming dragon sponsors on the wall. Dragon sponsors, man. Those are those that see clearly, see the purpose clearly, see, uh, you know what I'm saying, the CUV, the Choose Up Village that we are building. Clearly know that your support goes a long way into building our land, into establishing us in the ether. And I look forward to uh, getting all our ether back on track, man. Tune in this Friday, man. We're going to have a wonderful ether show, Shabbat show live at 432thedrop.com, man. You can, you know, tune in on the site. You can tune in on the app. Um, I know that on iTunes, they've been hiding our app, so I'm, I'm getting that back going on, uh, on on the Apple, on the iPhone, on Android. I think you can still download it. I hop to everybody that's downloaded the app. And, yeah, man, tune in. Friday, 9 o'clock, Cali time, man, Khalif time, man, you know what I mean? And uh, we're going to be live for a great Shabbat show, and we will be getting all our Ether flow, Ether family going. And uh, again, when you support us as becoming Dragon Sponsors, that is being divided into all of the Ether family dropping on the Ether. So I'm getting back on track with that, my Ether family, I hope for your patience, for real, for real, and just for just remaining true, remaining sponsors. You know what I mean? In a, in a time, man, when we walking through the valley of the shadow of death, man. And Hawa has been anointing our head with oil the whole time. Our creator, Hawa, has anointed our head with oil the whole time. So, man, let's get one of them high kind, higher marks, man. Let's, let's just fall back. I know you're busy. I know you've been doing a lot of things, man. You know, they call this stuff the new year, even with no new crops, no new harvest. But let's do this for the high kind, man. <sighs> Wow, oh, man, get that breath flowing, man. That's the, that's the real, oh, wow, man. That's the real flow, man. And while you're at it, click the link below. Subscribe to the new channel for Hakan Heimar. That's my real one, man. That's the guardian. That's my guardian right there, man. So deal with it, man. Dig on it. Google, uh, YouTube deleted his entire channel, which is sort of like the attacks they do on a lot of us, man. So. You know what I mean? Whether it's websites, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, uh, content on the site, copyright, this, that, all that stuff, man. So if you've been in this battle, you already know the, the tactics that they're putting on us. But please subscribe right now. I'm going to leave a link for every video we do, man, to make sure that Hakan gets all his, his subscribers back. The bro had thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers, man. So... We're going to build this channel back up together because we are a drop nation. Love to you, Hakan. And bro, be going live, man, on, on uh, YouTube, man. So get in that live chat. You know what I'm saying? Hakan's going to give you that breath. Whenever you see him going live, man, click on him and do right, man. Do yourself some good, man. Shabbat up, man. We're going to get into uh, some great drop, man. This ain't uh, Preston John uh, 37. I think we're on 37. Uh, I think they took one of our... PJ's down, man. They took, uh, I think, Preston John 
27 down. I think Ty Battle said, drop, you skip 27. I wouldn't skip 27, Aqua Ty. It just means they took it down. So I got to find that and upload that. If you, if anyone got Presser John 27, just, uh, you know, drop a comment or something, man, and uh, holler at me, man. Email that to me or something. But I think I might have that one so we can re-upload Presser John 27. But get in the classroom, man. Belly flop, you know what I'm saying? Just jump around, man. Get familiar with the Wong Kong, the King David, the Lep Nadango Dawit, the Raja, here Raja Chola II. Get familiar with the chronology, and this is the original research, the original investigation that we are doing at Drop Nation. Uh, again, when you come here, you're going to get that 432 flow. You're going to get that 4 plus 2 plus, plus 3 plus 2 is 9. You're going to get that spiral, that heart bone. You're going to get that script, you know what I mean? We're going to stay in the scripture, man. We're going to stay with our Torah, our Tanakh, our law, you know what I mean? You're going to get that indigenous truth that we kick in today. And you're going to get that orientation, you know what I mean? And that's our Excalibur sword that we swing. This is what we use to slice and dice all the hijacks. And they can't do nothing about it because the frequency is too real. And it's too true. And it's too battle-tested. It's too righteous, you know what I'm saying? It don't mean that we're perfect. It don't mean that we don't have error. It means that we're continuing to crystallize. You know what I mean? You can go back in anybody's past and say, oh, there's some static here or there's some static there. But the point is, have you crystallized over the years or over the months or over the days that you become aware? This is the difference between consciousness and awareness. We are not a conscious community, right? Remember, you can knock a boxer out. Put the smell and salt on his face and say, he ain't dead, boss. He's coming back to consciousness. He's conscious. But can he see the blows being dropped on his head? You know what I'm saying? Nah, but he's conscious. He ain't dead. Nah, man, we're, we're far from conscious, man. We're aware. We're in the war. We see the blows. We're blocking the blows. We got our dukes up. You know what I'm saying? It's love, man. And so if you ain't been prepared for war, if you ain't been prepared for the frequency war, then I advise you tune up. I advise you get the app. I advise you to, you know, just get Zani with that Thai battle poetry. Aqua Thai got the drop. We about to read some of Aqua Thai's drop really soon, man. She found some great drop in the book, uh, The Races of Man. Uh, it's in the drop library. You know what I mean? Get Zani in the library. Thai battle is our drop librarian as well as just, you know, just being one of the realest uh, warriors, you know what I'm saying, that you'll ever, ever, uh, you know, just be in the, in the, in the cipher of, you know, a wonderful poet, an extraordinary poet as well, and just so many things, so Aqua Tai and the whole Battle family, Big Brother Nature, we look forward to his show, you know what I'm saying, just, uh, you know, continuing, you know what I'm saying, uh, living well, you know, get that living well in the ether, and uh, all that you do, Big Brother, man, to hold down, the Battle Family, man, CJ Kyron, much love to you. I hear you're doing big things. I look forward to dropping CJ's new album, Crossroads. Y'all go check it out on SoundCloud, man. And we'll be in the ether with it, man. It's just a great thing. I, every time I, you know, come to address y'all, you see me, I, I'm just filled with this eye that, um, just to see it grow, you know what I mean? Even when I'm going through my battle, you know what I mean? When I see it, I come back, I see it grow. And it's beautiful, man. Um, you know, you are not your past, you are your present. So, you know, come over here in the judgment-free zone. You know what I'm saying? Come over here to get your information, you know, without the static and the hijack and the chaos, man. And uh, it's more than information, it's, it's vibration. So come over here for the vibration, you know what I mean? And with that, you will get that, you know, information. But it won't be too mind-heavy, it won't be too many minds, too many minds. You just be fluid, man. It's just a wake-up call because nothing you're getting here is something you don't already know. Everything you're getting here is something that you already know. It's already in your DNA or your electricity, your current. <coughs> I mean, that's your real currency, you know what I'm saying? So y'all stay above water. Let me get mine. And I'm going to you know, get to these, um, I'm going to get to the latest dra Dragon Sponsors. And the, uh, you know, all y'all that's supporting the merchandise, man, all the drop merch, the, the hats, the hoodies, all the, all that's going into the infrastructure of Drop Nation. So click the links below, get in the drop shop, keep supporting what we're building, 
you know what I'm saying, again, it's all about, you know, that oneness that we can experience together, man, when we walk in on land that's been sealed for us, you know what I mean, and, you know, keep supporting and, you know, just get cozy, that's the real thing, is get cozy, because that's how we know who is who and what is what, you know what I'm saying, and I hope to see y'all in the land, I hope that we can all have that coziness together, you know, it starts right here, it starts really within you, I hope to you know, inspire, we hope to inspire you to buy your own land that you can choose up at, you know, that type of thing, but we're just in the beginning stages, man, so you've been patient with us, and we've been doing it in real time, and we don't broadcast everything we do, we don't know what we're putting in behind the scenes to make it right for you, for the future, so that when you get the call, when you get the call, you ready, you know what I mean, it's about being ready, so let's train up, man, let's get ready, oh uh, man, I got my war drums playing, man, let's go, man. Lego Drop Nation. All right, man. Much of hop to Drop Nation, man. I just want to give these people, these wonderful, uh, you know, Shabbata that's been supporting us, man, through our ups and downs. Special aha, man. Penelope Campbell, aha, aha, for your Silver Dragon sponsorship. Uh, remember. Dragon sponsors, you can sponsor for twenty-five dollars a month as a copper dragon sponsor. That's much a high. Fifty dollars a month as a silver dragon sponsor, and a hundred dollars a month as a golden dragon sponsor. We're getting back to that, and that will be divided monthly. We're starting it right away, going to all the family dropping in the ether. So it's not just going directly to me or to us. It's going to be split, however many ways, ten, fifteen, however many people are dropping in the ether right now. We'll be getting, you know what I'm saying, a piece of every single Dragon sponsorship. So, you've been very patient with me, and it's coming right to you. And I hop to the Ether Squad. Get ready. Start getting your drop ready. You know what I mean? We're going to revamp it all. It's going to be just a whole nother wave. So, I hop to, Pen to Penelope Campbell. I hop to Deborah Adams. Much a hop, my sister. I think she just bought some merchandise. Much a hop, Deborah Adams. is coming to you. I can't say enough about the first dragon sponsor, man, on the wall right here, man. Jose Hipkiss, man. Yosef the real. He got that energy frequency, man. That Tokef Banak, man. It's about to be hitting y'all right upside the head bone, man. Get to it, Ether Squad. Monek Hamlet, much a high, my sister. She just became a golden dragon sponsor on the wall. A hop to Denise Green, much a high, my sister. Just became. A uh, copper dragon sponsor on the wall. Amira, home care, been 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 supporting from day one. She got that drop tuner package. Click the links. Go into drop tuner. We tune 50 songs a month for our people for only five dollars a month. So you got all the drop on how to do it yourself. And if you want to support our service for only five dollars a month, let's say. That we'll tune up to 50 songs, man. To 432 Hertz. We just drop box it to us, we drop box it back. Let's go. <coughs> oh man, trying to stay hijack free, man. Everybody's coughing in my house, man. Let's go. Uh, Mar Mauricia. Much of high just became a copper dragon sponsor on the wall. Much of high Mauricia. Patricia King. Copper Dragon sponsor on the wall, much a hob, Patricia King. Ash Ashaki Bell D. Much a hob got that drop tuner package, much a hob. Habai Okun Yem Yemiu. I hope I'm saying that right. Habai, much a hob, Habai. Got that copper dragon sponsor. Dragon on the wall, much a hob, Habai. And he's in the frequency of learning. Again, man, hit up the Frequency of Learning. You can go to FrequencyofLearning.com just to try it out. You know what I mean? Just to try it out, you know, see how you like it. Um, the password is 1234 to get through the door. Whether you're there or you're in our uh, drop chat or in, your, in our drop library, the password is 1234. And, uh, yeah, man, go to FrequencyofLearning.com 
or you can go to the site right on the home page and you can subscribe right there it's only ten dollars a month and you'll see all the playlists for your children it's mainly for homeschool and all that you know or your children come home from school my, my children every day ask me to play the calm zone so you just click on calm zone it's gonna calm your children down it's gonna calm your house down it's ten dollars a month once you wanna you know subscribe to it because the password will be changing so you want to make sure you have all the current passwords by being subscribed and yeah for 10 bucks a month man you get all these games the kids can play you know and you get music that they can listen to in that frequency of 4 through 2 hertz it's a program that we're spreading throughout Los Angeles Unified School District as well as all of the daycare centers learning development centers even the autism centers in Los Angeles right now we will be spreading that further Shout out to my mom, my man, Mama Drop, who's the president of our company right here, Frequency of Learning. And it's our bread and butter. And it's what we spread every day. It's what we're building every day. Normally, we uh, sell packages for only 25 bucks for all the daycare centers and stuff. But right here, you can get it for $10 for your children. So enjoy FrequencyofLearning.com and go to the homepage and sign on up, man. Hop to Habai for signing up to Frequency of Learning. And Habai signed up to the drop tuner package, man. So Habai, man, aha, man, for that trifecta, becoming a Copper Dragon sponsor, getting in the frequency of learning, homeschool package, and the drop tuner package, man. And, you know, that goes a long way, bro, to keeping the water flowing. Aha, Habai. Aha to Verinda Rosado, who became a Dragon sponsor on the wall, and she bought some merchandise, man. So aha to Verinda Rosado, Tide Battle keeps the water flowing. Drop tuna package, all that, man. Drop Tide, you know, Merc. Tide just keeps the water flowing, man. Aqua Tide, we love you. Much a hive. True, true to life, a hive. And the whole battle family, man. We in battle time. Yo, man, a hive to Simon Johnson, who also just became a Copper Dragon sponsor on the wall. Simon Johnson's been holding us down since the balcony, man. So he's a true balcony server. Kenneth Bowie, much a hop for becoming a, a drop tuner subscriber, man. Got his drop tuner package, $5 a month. Nettie Perry became a copper dragon sponsor on the wall. So we see our dragon sponsors are growing. Our dragon sponsors are growing, man. So to eat the squad, get ready. We're going to have regular payouts to them. And, you know, it's so dope because, it, you know, we start to build together. So it's not just us, but we got a whole family, man, dozens that are going to be, you know, start having residual income coming in just from dropping in the ether, just from reading books to y'all. They're going to have, you know, a cool little, cool little sup, man. Maybe they can, you know, you know, go, go watch a nice little movie, man, on you, you know what I'm saying? Or they can save their money, put it together and buy more land. So that's really our goal, man, is to keep buying more land. So keep becoming a dragon sponsor on the wall. Charles Mason. He got the frequency of learning, $10 a month package, a hive, Charles Mason, Dara Campbell, Miss D, the Copper Color Awakening. I can't say enough about the Copper Color Awakening and Miss D. She's been through so much. She goes through so much. She's truly humble. Milwaukee, stand up. Milwaukee, stand up. Milwaukee, stand up, man. Love you, Miss D. True to life, soldier. And, uh, yeah, she's a Silver Dragon sponsor on the wall, man. So, that's true to life. A hive to Miss D. Copper Dragon sponsor on the wall. And, you know, just one more for uh, Shanette Francis, man. Shanette Francis is a frequency of learning sponsor as well as, you know, just all our merchandise. You know what I'm saying? Shanette Francis gives love to. I think I got everybody, man. Deborah Adams just, uh, you know, came through with a beautiful purchase as well. Much of hive. Deborah Adams, man, and Rob Fresh, Con Fresh, man. You know what it is, man. You know what it is, Con Fresh, man. It's time to eat the rub. So let's go, man. We eat. We in the ether. And that's just a few that keeps the water flowing. And I want to give you that special aha, man, at all times. So you know that it's true to life, supporting the team, supporting a, a whole flow, a whole movement as we grow, seal our land, and keep our infrastru infrastructure tight. To keep it tight, man, so that, you know, every time it gets, you know, shut down, every time they try to shut us down, every time they try to hack us, we got, you know what I'm saying, the means, you know what I mean? We got the capital to, 
you know, form a new website, you know, get the software we need, get the equipment we need to come clearer, to come realer to you. Eventually, we're going to have a whole studio set up, man, where we can all come in and drop in the ether. So what you're doing is supporting the dream work. And hey, man, teamwork make a dream work, man. I love to rah rah the great one, man. I hop to you, man. Let go. Let's start it right here, man. Y'all remember this? <coughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Remember this one, man? Yeah, man, I found this in a, uh... What was it I gotta retape this joint. I got the cover coming off, man. I normally keep it in a bubble wrap, you know. But I brought it out just for y'all, cause I said, man, this is the third wave. We need to, uh, you know, round up some important points, man. Some key points. And I was out in uh, Thousand Oaks one day out here in Cali, man, and. Found this book for 15 bucks, man. And I got so many emails. And so many comments with people saying that, dang, man, you, you came up. Cause I can't find it for less than 200, 250. So let go. Now, this is the history of the United States by J.C. Ridpath. I'm going to follow up some grape drop uh, from the races of men by Aquatai Battle. And we're going to keep flowing in it. You know, I won't be able to read, you know, see all the stuff I have marked out to read to y'all, man. See all these marks, man. So, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a journey. You know what I mean? But I want to stay in it this time, not just hit it up one time. And let's just start from the beginning and uh, we're gonna cover some of the Virginia oh well, we're gonna get into some 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 timelines some charts some English discoveries and settlements Going into Massachusetts and King Philip's War. We're going to get into New York settlement. All right. A little bit of that Maryland. Go back to the King James. Remember what we got out of this book last time that in 1603, King James himself all right, actually declared for the colonization of land purchase and patent in America. Now when you combine this with all the other drop that we've come to regarding the Hebrews being in America, well, what was King James doing when he was getting uh, these patents from the Hudson Bay Company and the, Lu and the London Company? All right. Who are you paying taxes to today? You realize that he was colonizing and you know, conquering the Hebrew people in the 1600s. So go get that drop. You know, a hop to everyone who's still digging on that. Um, you know, 1603 patent of King James. And it wasn't the beginning of the spread necessarily of the New Testament. Love to Hawa Stu. Jay Stu is doing great work. Bringing out, um, you know what I'm saying, this the uh, Aramaic, you know, connection, um, uh, I forgot the name of it, but what he calls the, uh, the original New Testament versus the new New Testament, all that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying, and this is just work for, we got to keep digging, man, that's just the thing, you know what I mean, we just got to keep digging, 
of course, man, you know how we rock. You know what I mean? You know the perspective of at least my perspective, you know what I'm saying, of, you know, hey, you know, we are already here. And this confederacy and this council brought us another savior, right? Another energy, but they made phantoms and they made duplicates. And like, like Hiram's doing beautifully as well. Hiram's doing a great job connecting the Joshua's because it all connects to the original Joshua. The Joshua of the New Testament is not different, you know what I'm saying, in its essence than the, than the Joshua of the Old Testament. It's just that he's been put in a different timeline, in a different story, in a different context for you to start worshiping this, this other Joshua as God. You already know, you know, King David was walking on water out of the Benjamin of Tadula. So, you know, these miracles and all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Moses has already been kicking miracles and all this uh, and all that, you know what I mean? But our Joshua here, who even the Mormons call Kitsukootu, they call Kitsukootu, the priest king, Jesus Christ, in the 1100s. So who they're referring to, the Mormons, as Kitsukootu, is Joshua, who they're calling Jesus, which letting you know that it's the same Jesus they're trying to refer to in what's called this Old Testament, or New Testament. Now, it don't matter if the New Testament goes back to the Aramaic, or if it goes back to the Hebrew, we have hijacked Aramaics. <laughs> we have hijacked Hebrews. When you talk about the tribes of Edom, which language did they speak? An Edemic language? No, they spoke Hebrew. So just because something goes back to the Hebrew doesn't make it hijack free. It just means that where was this uh, hijack happening? Whether they put it in the Hebrew or Aramaic, what's the goal of them twisting this Joshua into a new story? Because even in the Quran, it says that Miriam's son, that this so-called Jesus and Mary in the New Testament, Miriam's son is Joshua. In the Quran, it says that Miriam's son is Joshua. So you have a Joshua and Mary or a Jesus and Mary of the Old Testament. And then you have a Mary and Jesus of the New Testament. Now the story is all combined with elements from Egypt with the Horus and all this other Babylonian you know what I'm saying hijack so what's the twist for regardless of what language it goes to of course there's going to be dropping a new testament every lie contains the truth so for all those soldiers going in there and just digging out that truth digging out that water digging out that Moshe getting the Moshe out the bath water and seeing if there's anything that we're missing regarding our Joshua and the the duplicate of our Joshua that's being given to us now out of what they're calling a new test, a new covenant. Our old covenant, our old laws are only called old by our oppressor. So we don't fall into the spell of old and new. We know that our Mashaic law is our law forever. And anything they give us in a new package, regardless of the language, comes with spells and sorcery, which connects to King James, which connects to any other hijacks from Eden that speak in Hebrew or anything else, Aramaic or anything else. You know what I'm saying? So we got great brothers doing great research, and I applaud you, bros, and let's keep bringing it together because nobody has all the, the drop or all the truth. Certainly I do not, right? So... I'm continuing to empty my cup, and we are doing it together, investigating together. Remember, teamwork makes this dream work, man, and I hop to y'all for that, man. Shit. Yeah, we got some great drive coming out of this, man, so let go, man. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning, and it's going to feel good, and we're going to zine all the way up, man. History of the United States. Part 1. Aboriginal America. Chapter 1. The Red Man. Origin 
and distribution of character. The primitive inhabitants of the New World were the red men called Indians. Well, you know what the red is, right? You know what the ruddy is, right? You know what the red is, right? So don't get it twisted. We know what the whites are, right? Don't get it twisted. The name Indian was conferred upon them from their real or fancy resemblance to the people of India. What complexion are they? Let's go. <coughs> but without any such similarity, the name would have been the same. For Columbus and his followers, believing that they had only rediscovered the Indies, would of course call the inhabitants Indians. The supposed similarity between the two races, if limited to mere personal appearance, had some foundation in fact. But in manners, customs, intentions, institutions, and character, no two peoples could be more dissimilar than the American Aborigines and the sleepy inhabitants of China and Japan. Now we know, this is J.C. Ridpath. And he's full of this hijack. And we know from our investigation that the original people of China and Japan are all copper colored Nagas. So let's keep reading because watch how he's going to throw out this Israelite thing. Watch how he's going to say we don't know nothing about these people in America, but they can't be Israelites. And then he's just going to keep moving and not even go into it. So it's almost like he's getting paid to dismiss something, but he might kind of be just dropping a hint at the same time. The origin of the North American Indians is involved in complete obscurity. What does that tell you? The origin of the Native American Indians is involved in complete obscurity. It means we don't know nothing about these people, boss. Boss, man, we can't tell you anything. It's completely obscure. The origin of these people found here in America is involved in complete obscurity. That they are one of the oldest races of mankind cannot be doubted. They didn't say the origin of these people here, these ruddy, copper colored people here. Remember 1828 definition of American? Remember the first definition of American in 1828? Webster Dictionary is the copper color races found here by the Europeans. Carameo has done incredible job, man. Subscribe to Carameo. Ahau. Man, that's that's a real con right there. You know, he's been breaking down. He has a whole series breaking down, you know what I'm saying? Man, from American Indian to African American. I believe we got that right, man. It's it's incredible. So get that drop from Carameo. They are one of the oldest races of mankind. This cannot be doubted. I say you are the original man. The original woman. The original, you know, sister. The original brother to the earth. But at what date or by what route they came to the western continent is an unsolved problem. We don't know, boss. Boss, we don't know. It's completely obscure. It's an unsolved problem. Remember how we got it in, um, I believe Thoroughgood said the two greatest questions in the scholarly community was one, where did these aboriginals come from? And two, what happened to the lost tribes of Israel? These were the two greatest or are the two greatest questions in the scholarly community is where did you Nagas come from and what happened? What happened to the lost tribes of Israel? Well, they sure aren't where you try to put a state at in 1947 on the other side of the so-called Mercator projection map. So if that was a valid question then, it's a valid question now. Who are you Nagas? Where are you Israel? This is what he has to say about Israel. 
Many theories have been proposed to account for the Red Man. Many theories have been proposed to account for the Red Man's presence in the New World. <coughs> Is this the New World? Is this new to you? But most of them have been vague and unsatisfactory. So most of the theories in the scholarly community are vague and unsatisfactory. It is obscure. It is an unsolved problem. Why it gotta be a problem? Why why we gotta have problems? It's only a problem because they need to develop a proxy. They want to develop a proxy. It's only a problem because they want to substitute you with something else. Now, when I say Native American, man, you don't see yourself. When I say Israel, you don't see yourself. You Nagas are the only people who can tell people who they are and the whole world goes crazy. Because the Native American proxy from Siberia and all other places that Genghis Khan brought and mixed over here now claims to be you. We say copper color. They say, but wait a minute, we're, we're copper color. Honestly. Honestly, way. Come on, man. Don't make, me, don't make me bring my penny out. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it because even Benjamin Franklin ain't playing. Even Benjamin Franklin is telling you the truth. We're going to get to it. So many theories have been proposed to account for the red man's presence in the, in the, in the old world. Okay. But most of them have been vague and unsatisfactory. The notion that the Indians are the descendants of the Israelites is absurd, he says, Sir J.C. Ridpath. And then he just goes on and says, The half-civilized tribes wandering from the Euphrates should reach North America surpasses human cred credulity. It's not even possible. That the wandering tribes from the Euphrates reached America. So the reason why he's saying that it is absurd that you Nagas in America are the tribes of Israel is because he places the river Euphrates in the other world, in the Middle East. Now, did we not? Kick a wonderful document concerning the river Euphrates in America. I mean, it's all relative, man. I mean, fall back, man. Fall back. Get zogging with me, man. Oh. I mean, it really is a beautiful thing. It's the third wave, man. Welcome back, Drop Nation. Let's go. We back. This is an article. From Von Hela. In the spring of 2004. <laughs> and it's concerning what he's calling an advertisement.
Pause it. Read it. Now this advertisement. Let's read about it. This is an advertisement from the 1700s. And the 1700s is very relative to what we're about to read in uh, the History of the United States by J.C. Ripath. We're going to cut through some of the history from the 1600s and we're going to go into the mid-1700s, 18th century with Benjamin Franklin's own writings. We're going to go into the races of men, Aqua Thai battle, covering the same period of time. This particular advertisement of the arrival of a tapir, T-A-P-I-R, which is a very rare animal. But they're saying at this time, in this woodcut poster, printed text, pasted in Wandering de Nature in 1700 in the Artiste Library, the University of Amsterdam. Alright, so it says the advertising poster that Velton preserved in his scrapbook probably was posted by the door of the White Elephant Inn. This is them doing advertisements to get white people to come to America. Alright, I need you to, I need you to be clear. They're trying to get white people to come to America, so they're giving advertisements like, look at these great animals. You know, this this, this is unlike anything. This is fantasy. This is mythology. Yeah, because the Naga was a myth. Preston John was a myth to them, right? Letters of 1165, uh, dragons, all this stuff is a myth, right? It's all a myth. And they found the land of the mythology. They found the gold. They found the Hebrew people. Let's go. It says the striking black and white woodcut of the unusual looking tapir attracts the eye so that even those who were not fluent readers might stop, look, and even go in. The text follows with the broad invitation, quote, to all gentlemen, ladies, burghers, merchants, and furthermore to all lovers of animals. To come and see this rarity, which many writers say does not exist anywhere in the world. It has been captured, quote, with great difficulty and cost in the river Euphrates in America. Do you think this is play play? Do you think this is play play? Pause it. Read it. Matter of fact, click the link below because I'm dropping all these links. I always drop my sources. I always drop the links so you can investigate on your own. Let's go. This is our recon at Drive Nation. This is what we put together throughout the years. So this ain't no play play. So when we, we read one thing, it connects to another thing that connects to another thing. And we thread it together and we see what we got. Let's go. So over here we got J.C. Ripath. What is he saying? Pause it. Read it. Oh, we're going to get to King James. We're going to get to King James. Don't trip. Now this animal, this tapir... Don't exist nowhere else in the world. It has been captured with great difficulty and cost in the river Euphrates and America. This is probably an error. You know they gotta you, you know they gotta say that. Cause he just said the river Euphrates is in America. Which changes everything. So what they gotta do? They gotta, you know, they, they gotta kill that off, right? So yeah, it's probably it's probably an error. They didn't say it's definitely wrong. But they had to put some, you know, seeds of doubt in your mind bone. It's probably an error. Is it an error? Where's the real river Euphrates? In America? This is probably an error, they say. 
the Euphrates River is far from America. But geographical accuracy clearly is not an issue. Come on, man. Geographical accuracy is all the issue. Because if the, if the River Euphrates is in America, it's not in the Middle East. If the River Euphrates is in America, then it's not so absurd, is it, J.C. Redpath, that the lost tribes of Israel are in America where the real Euphrates is, the real Egypt is. Research that, that research from G.E. Kincaid with the Grand Canyon, Egypt, and America, Higher Marks, doing incredible with that. Subscribe to Higher Marks' new channel. Don't miss the drop. Let's go. Such a description fires the viewer's imagination. Aren't, aren't you fired up to hear that the real river Euphrates is in America? We talked about the Tennessee, the Hawassi River. Hawassi River. Hawassi River. <coughs> it's some water, man. It's about to be good. <laughs> Aren't you fired up? Because it said it fires up the viewer's imagination. Most would never travel to America. Most would never travel to America. So again, this post, this advertisement was just to get whites to come to your land, to colonize your land. We're going to get into the colonies, man. The London Company, the Hudson Bay Company, King James 1603, colonizing America, man. Then giving you a 1611 New Testament hijack. I mean, if it wasn't hijack, why is he giving it to you? After colonizing you. Let's go. But the poster offers an opportunity to encounter the faraway place at a local pub. Velton sketches give rare insight into the type of response such encounters elicit. For he does not picture the animal as he saw it, surrounded by onlookers in a white elephant inn. Rather, he paints a colorful gauche of several tapirs grazing peacefully in the waters of what is undoubtedly meant to be the Euphrates River in America. Come on, man. I can't make this up, man. I can't make it up, man. Pause it. Come on, man. Let go. Turn my lamp a little bit so you can get this drop here, man. Here we go. Alright. I ain't trying to yell at y'all, but yeah, y'all gotta pause this, man. Y'all gotta read this, man. Or click the link below. So he said, undoubtedly, this is meant to be the Euphrates River in America. Alright, stop. Let's go back. Let's go back to the book. History, United States. J.C. Ridpath is saying the origin of North American Indians has involved in complete obscurity. That they are one of the oldest races of mankind cannot be doubted. But at what date or by what route they came to be to the Western continent is an unsolved problem. Many theories have been proposed to account for the red man's presence in the new world, old world. But most of them have been vague and unsatisfactory. The notion that the Indians are the descendants of the Israelites is absurd. No, boss, we, we can't prove it, boss. But the origin of the Native American Indians is involved in complete obscurity. Hold up, man. Gotta do it. I'm gonna go uh, 1828 Webster Dictionary. For those
those you know that's getting it for the first time this is the definition of American in 1828 pause it reading the copper color race is found here the copper color race is found here the copper color race is found here and no the Native American proxy is not copper color stop it everybody want to be dark now we dark too everybody want to be dark now see as soon as you tell people who you are they start going crazy but let's put up a uh, obscure <coughs> dark destitute of light living in darkness not easily understood I mean look man you you read so what he's saying is the origin of the Native American Nagas is involved in complete darkness not easily understood not much known or observed we don't know nothing we don't know shit but to call them Israelites is crazy but we don't know nothing you see this forked tongue devil you don't know who we are but the fact that we're the seeds of the Most High is crazy to you for one thing and one thing only that you want to name as fact that these civilized tribes wandering from beyond the Euphrates should reach North America surpasses human credulity. That these civilized tribes coming from the Euphrates River is crazy. But what if the Euphrates River is in America? Is it still crazy? All right, man, let's go to uh, Ty Battles Drop. The Races of Men, click the link below. I'm on page 165. I'm on 165 of the PDF, or of the book. 171 of the PDF. I'm starting right here, The Discovery of a New World by Columbus. A hive to Aqua Tide because she found some Prester drop and we love Prester drop at Drop Nation. Let's go. The discovery of a new world by Columbus is the most remarkable event in human history with the leading features of that great event all must no doubt be acquainted. My object is merely to trace the progress of races on that vast territory and after a single remark on the ancient history of the American continent I shall resume my concourse remember copper color race is found here when Columbus and those who followed him first set foot on the islands and mainland of that vast continent destined to play so important a part in the future destinies of mankind that land were the greatest of all experiments to be solved alone by time is now progressing namely the practic practicability of self-government or democracy that land where liberty driven from Europe Asia and Africa by whist dragoons whisker dragoons and church militants uh, we've got some dragon drop do we got some dragon drop? Where's my dragoons? Right here. Right here. Hey. <laughs> Let go. So that land where liberty, driven from Europe, Asia, and Africa by whiskered dragoons and church militants, <coughs> found that sure resting place, the fulcrum with which she may perhaps one day upturn the strongholds of fantasism and violence. That land which first of all brought out the true character of the Saxon race, of the Saxon mind. In fact, in that land, Columbus and his followers, most of whom were men of great ability, 
though he alone had genius in that land these great men found nothing to resemble strictly the countries they had left nor trees nor shrubs nor fish nor fowl nothing that lived resembled what they had previously seen nothing over here resembled anything they had over there which is why they put up advertisements like this they found you in a new world new animals new people So nothing they had over here resembled anything they had over there. Nothing that they had previously seen. I had better say, nothing was identical with the productions of the old world or their world. Man was there, no doubt, but he was not identical with any other race. In his bodily and mental qualities, he differed widely from all others. So what they found over here didn't resemble anything they had over there which is why they can't just say you come from Africa when they say that your entire being is obscure what's obscure in the dark not easily understood not much known or observed there's no repeatable and observable science to tell you who you are all they can tell you is that you Americans are copper colored races found here by the European? Let's go, Aquata. Let's get it. But other equally strange forms presented themselves people to fields and rivers and forests, all differing specifically and generically, as we express this grand and solemn fact and technical language i call it a solemn fact seeing that it gives rise to profound reflections whence came this new race of men new race of men are the hebrews new to them yes you're new to them yes they only heard about you they were millenarians they thought the world was ending in 1666 They thought the world was ending. They were in Europe. They were in the Black Death, the Black Plague. Then they found you with nothing but sun and gold. You are a whole new race. Something different. Copper color, but different than anything they've ever seen before. Whence, where did this new race of men come from? Then we just asked that question. Didn't J.C. Ripath just say... We don't know, but at what date or by what route they came to the Western continent is an unsolved problem. <coughs> Let's go, man, so I can drink my tea. Man had journeyed without the horse and sheep and ox. He had also, I think, forgotten the surrealia, a theory was easily got up to explain all this. Last came men of science, lovers of truth, enemies of romance and falsehood. Their labors proved that everything there that lived was specifically different from living beings on any other land. Copper color races found here, you're different than any other living beings on any other land. That even the apes differ specifically from the apes of the other world by having an additional two and by being without the central spot or hole in the re retina of the eye. Man found in man and in the apes of the old world or other world that the new world here was an erroneous phrase. A phrase, erroneous phrase is the new world. An erroneous phrase seeing that it was a very old world in every sense of the word 
that the copper colored race of America, that race was extended throughout the length and breadth of the land where neither metamorphosized Welshmen nor Connaught men nor Norwegians nor even Polynesians. The last hypothesis I believe offered the credulous for the peopling of America, always accepting that standby of the thoroughbred theorists, namely that the copper colored Indians, that is the true Americans, were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts, headed, I suppose, by Prester John. Time out, man. You think this is play play? This is everything. This is, this is everything, man. This is everything we're digging on, man. He says it's obscure. He says the notion that you're Israelites is absurd. Again, I'll read it, then I'm going to show it to you so you can pause it and read it yourself. But I advise you, click the link below. That the new world was an erroneous phrase, seeing that it was a very old world in every sense of the word. Hold up, man. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it and read it, man. In other words, it's crazy to call this a new world. New world. When what? It's a very old world in every sense of the word. So this is the old world. This is the old world. That the copper colored race of America, that race which extended throughout the length and breadth of the land. That's why you're the definition of an American. Who was Preston John? Love to tie battle for this drop. Prester John, the legend and sources. Prester John, why does he look like a knight? Why does Prester John look like you, Naga? What's it say on the bottom, man? Love to tie battle for this drop. Tie battle. Sent us this drop. It says the legendary press of John in engraving. Found where? Courtesy of Harvard Art Museum. This is in Harvard. Harvard has the press of John studies. If you ain't talking about press of John, you ain't talking about shit. What do they call press of John in the last? Lost tribes and promised lands, man. I'm going to get it, man. The last noble image of the Negro is what... Rudolph Sanders calls Preston John the last noble image of the Negro. And he's not holding a cross. He's holding the Tau. The Tau is the last letter of the Hebrew. It means the mark, the sign, the covenant, the makir, totros. This is in Harvard. This Negro... It's what the Crusades is all about. So we're going to pick up on Preston John number 37, live in full effect. We got over 45 hours episodes of Preston John in the ether on the radio that we kick to you live. Go on the website, 42drop.com. Just search Preston John and you'll be in the Preston John hour and you'll get 45 hours that we kick not on YouTube, exclusively at 42drop.com. And love to tie battle for showing us what time it is. So if we're hearing here, if we're hearing here,
if we're hearing here that the people in of America always accepting that the standby of the thoroughbred theorists, namely that the copper color Indians. So this is going to kill the whole debate about the current Native American being the true copper color Indios or in Hawaz or Hawaz seed or the tribes of Israel. This is going to kill that all. I mean, Karen Mayo already killed it all, but this gonna kill it all. I mean, you can go see all the murals and paintings all throughout Mexico of these people with locks that's already here. But, you know, this is gonna kill that all. Yeah, you read the 1828 Webster Dictionary, copper color, but they want to claim to be copper color too. All right, cool. So this is gonna kill that all. And we're killing it off by very <laughs> precise sources that you're not gonna get everywhere. We're, gonna, we, we're killing it off with the history of the United States by J.C. Redpath. We're killing it off by the races of Red Man right in our library, click the link below. We're killing it off with Preston John, the legend and his sources, giving you the real depiction, the real night, the lost tribes of Israel, last noble image of the Negro. By Keegan Brewer, the real knight. But it's gonna kill that off. I mean, we're killing it off by this great article, Van Helen, Van Helen PDF, the 1700s, kicking the Euphrates River in America. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You got the link. We just talking to advertisements, right? The river Euphrates in America, but this gonna kill that off. The copper Indians, that is the true Americans, right? The true Americans, right? The copper color races found here by the European before the title was stolen and given to the European and their successors. <laughs> Combine that with the Papal Bull. Let's go, man. It's time for my tea. Combine that with the Papal Bull. Dumb Diverse 1452. Them taking your kingdoms, your dukedoms. What kingdom? What kingdom did they take? Why did they start the Crusades? Who are they looking for? What copper colored Naga were they searching for? Kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities. Putting you in perpetual slavery. Papal Bull, Dumb Diverse is 1452. But now you're going to have to dig on this, man. Because this is going to kill that all. Pause it, man. Because we just talking Prester John. Or King David, as he's being called. This popped off all the King Arthur legends. King Arthur is King David, is Preston John, which means Priest King or Wong Kong. Hong Kong is named after Wong Kong or Preston John. So how can you say that these inhabitants of America, Aborigines, are dissimilar to the people of Japan and China? When it's named after... The priest king pressed the John. Wong Kong. Wong Kong. Wong means king. Kong means priest. Wong Kong is the priest king. Hong Kong is named after this man. Or King Kong, right? Is about this man. Hosea 3 and 5. Hosea 3 and 5. Hosea 3 and 5 says what? That the children of Israel will return and seek their creator and David. Their creator and David. They will seek their nobility again. They will read in between the timelines, put their chronology back, and realize King David was just ran up on by Genghis Khan in the 1200s. And this is what the dark, the dark, the obscure, this is what the obscure ages is all about. We know little about them, right? Not much known or observed, right? 
But this is going to kill all that off. Let's read it. Namely, that the copper Indians, that is, the true Americans, were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts headed, I suppose, by Prester John. You ready? The true Americans, the copper colored Nagas, the Indians, the Nagas, the true Americans were the lost tribes of Israel headed by Prester John. Take their kingdoms, their dukedoms, their principalities, their movable and immovable goods and put them into perpetual servitude. The copper color Indians are the true Americans that are the lost tribes of Israel who fled headed by Prester John. We're just reading about the dark races of men. The dark races of men. All right, man. Let's just take a pause, man. I want you, I, I need this to sink in. So when we dig on Preston John, we're digging on the last noble image of Negro that this particular priest king, Preston John, is the real King David. Or Wong Khan, when you look him up in the Mongol history. And this is who they went to war against, but first Genghis Khan went to war against him. When you look into the Encyclopedia Britannica, if you have a copy of the Encyclopedia Britannica, look up Preston John. And it's going to call Genghis Khan his son or grandson. So if Genghis Khan is his son or grandson, what does Genghis Khan look like? Then you'll see this is a more on more war, a melanated war. In the 1200s, the Dark Ages. Now you fast forward to the Papu Bull, Dumb Diverses, in what? 1452, 200 years after the Melanated War, Genghis Khan, the son of King David, or the foster child of King David, wanted to marry into the David family. And King David said, nah, Prince John said, nah, you can't have my daughters to marry. And they went to war. So you tell me what time it is. Tide Battle got the drop. Let us leave such sickening, silly follies to their investors and to those who hate truth, the romanticists, the novelists, the tourists, and proceed with our inquiry. So, you see, they, they, they want to shoot that down after giving you the drop. They say, yeah, you Nagas, you copper-colored Nagas, all the lost tribes of promised land, you're following Prester John. That's your head, man. That's your chief. That's your Khan, your priest Khan, Prester Priest Khan. But we're going to leave all these follies alone. Same thing as J.C. Ripad. <coughs> the notion that the Indians are the descendants of the Israelites is absurd. How can they have come here from the Euphrates? Unless the Euphrates was already in America. Right here. The river. He paints a colorful golf shade of several tapirs grazing peacefully in the waters of what is undoubtedly meant to be the Euphrates River in America. What does Benjamin Franklin have to say? Pull the link up. Read it. Uh. 
why should the Palatine Moors be suffered to swarm into our settlements? They will never adopt our customs or any than they had than they can contain obtain our complexion. So these Hebrews won't adopt hijack customs any more than the Hebrews will obtain the hijack complexion, the whites. Now listen to what he says. All of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthy, swarthy black. Let's look up swarthy. Read it. What do we got? Being of a dark hue or a dusky complexion, tawny in warm climax, the complexion of men is universally swarthy or black. So black, swarthy. The Moors, Spaniards, and Italians are more swarthy than the French, Germans, and English. So the Spaniards and Italians are who? What else happened in 1492? The Hebrews, the Jews, the Hebrews are expelled out of Spain and Italy. So this 1492 invasion, headed from the 1452 Papal Bull, was an attack on all Hebrews in America with this Christ bearer, Cristobal Columbus, Cristobal Baal. And then what? The Hebrews in Spain, Italy, whatnot, all of the Swarthies, codenamed Saracens, all the dark hues are attacked, specifically the Lost Tribes of Israel, headed by Prester John. And one more time before we make our dismount, man. One more game, man. Love the tie battle. This is an incredible drop, and I just couldn't wait to share it. And it's really kicking off our third wave, and it's it's just only right that tie battle got the drop, man. <laughs> the Copper Indians, that is, the true Americans, were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts, headed, I suppose, by Prester John. So these true Americans weren't just, you know, fleeing there recently or whatever they call them, man. Just, they were already there. And these were the Israelites under King David. And King David was the empire, emperor, king, khan, priest king of the entire world. Of the three Ethiopias, Abyssinians, the three Indias, as it says in the Lost Tribes of Promised Land. He was the ruler of all the Indians, the Indios, the three Indias, which quite possibly included North and South America and Africa and Asia. But we also have to play our lands that we don't see anymore, like Mu, the land of Mu on the other side of the Pacific. You know what I mean? During my you know, whole jam up, I had great conversations with brothers from Hawaii. They were telling me straight up that the Hawaiians were dark, swarthy, so-called Negro black people. They were talking, you know, I was telling about the job about Kamehameha, Kamaya, Kamaya, you know, it was like, yeah, that's a black king or a swarthy king who united the islands and they got the same history. So they just, you know what I'm saying, validated what we're kicking. And these are our brothers behind the walls, man. Again, this third wave is for the prisoners. Kawhi had me in that situation for a reason, man. So I know what I'm doing it for. To be focused, to be clear, clear-minded. My mind bone, purified. My heart spiraling, connected to my tribe. Hakan, take the wheel. AD, what it do? Let's go, man. Isaac Ford is tuning us above the barrier. What it do, man? Zeke, what it do, man? So, you know, and all my... All my tribe, man. What up getting to the root of it all, man? Milwaukee stand up. Man, what it do, Con Fresh? Man, what it do, my jigger, Caramayo? We just flowing here, man. 
and all the folks, man, that's flowing on on YouTube, man, and, and everywhere in between, man, and IG, all the ones that see the real, that can feel the real. All right, real recognize real, but that recognition is a sound. All right, that recognition is a feeling. So these Israelites were headed by Preston John, man. I can't wait to get back in this book right here, man. Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, man. There's so much dropping here, man. I mean, I, I'm afraid to even, you know, start going into it because this whole drop's going to be about this book. But I'm going to say this, man. I'm, I'm going to say this, man. I'm going to say this drop, man, for uh, Preston John, uh, 37. Yeah, I mean... Man, man, man. Man, man, man. Every time I open it up, you see that drop. And this is a this is a compilation of sources. This one right here is from uh 15 1526 and 1527, which is why this book is so rare. You see up top. Says the true information of the lands of Preser John of the Indies, the priest king, the knight. And they got some great information uh, connected with Preston John and Genghis Khan. Is this letter in 1221 by Jacques de Vitry details Jacques' state of mind about the stories that were being broadly circulated about King David? In short, he believed that, according to Jacques, the Muslim enemy did too, and in fear sent letters of entreaty to make peace with crusaders which they refused, King David was for Jaquis, the ultimate destroyer, coming to help the Crusaders vanquish Islam forever. There you go. Pause it. Read it. Because we just talking about who? King David. In the 1200s. And we know that Genghis Khan took that title, David. So he started being called King David. All right. But he only started being called King David because there was already a King David here, a knight or a prester or a priest king. And this is the only image of Preston John they're going to give you in this Harvard resource, this Harvard study. Remember in the intro. They call him a mysterious oriental leader. Mysterious oriental leader, right? <coughs> All right, man, I'm about to make my dismount, man. It says, although much of the material presented here has been known in the field of Prester John studies. Did you know there were the Prester John studies in Harvard? So most High is raising us up. No one else is talking about this information. No one else is digging on it for over, you know, I, I did two hour series here. We did 36 of them. That's about 70 plus hours of research right here on YouTube. We've done 45 episodes in the ether at 432thedrop.com live on the radio. That's 45 hours there of Preston John. 45 hours plus 70, I don't know, 120, 130 hours of research has been done so far. And that's just the published material. If you combine all the Drop Nations recon, man, on Preston John, you'll understand, understand, overstand what Hosea 3 and 5 is about. For Israel will return to Hawa, our creator, and seek our creator, and David. 
Although much of the material presented here has been known in the field of the Preston John studies for some time, nearly all of it has been available. Nearly all of it has been available to those who have knowledge of various foreign languages. When we get into the Voight manuscript, where they believe it's Preston John's manuscript, but they can't decode it. They've been trying to decode it at MIT and other institutions. They've been trying to break the code, but they can't break the code of the Voynich Manuscript, which is also originally from the 1200s, 13th century, although they try to say the 16th century, but we have evidence that it's the 12th century, 13th century, which lines up with the 1200s, which lines up with the Dark Ages, the Swarthy Ages. They call it an en encrypted Hebrew. <laughs> That's what they call it, real talk. You know, get the drop. They call the Voyant Manuscript an encrypted, encoded Hebrew. So it's definitely about the Israelites. It's been sealed from them. And the only people that can unseal it, my naga, is you. So we're going to get back in the studies of the Voyant Manuscript to break the code. Since although Zarnik himself profited from his predecessors, he is generally considered to be the founder of the academic study of Prester John. And much of the material presented here was brought to light through his thorough and groundbreaking work on the sources, man. This is Prester John the Legend and its sources, and it's coming to you. Aqua Tide Battle, you got the drop, because remember the Copper Indians are the true Americans who were the lost tribes of Israel who were headed by Preston John. And that's all in the races of man under the dark races of man right there on page 167 of the book and 173 of the PDF. And what did uh, Benjamin Franklin have to say one more time? All of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthy black. Russia, Rus, Rus, and Rus, and Rus, and Rus, Italy, Spain, France, Sweden, and Germany are black. I can't make this shit up. This is from Benjamin Franklin's essay called America as a Land of Opportunity in 1751. He didn't say that these were uh, just copper colored enough to still fit the current American, Native American proxy. Because you got some skin tone don't make you copper color. He's saying they're black, swarthy. All of America. So he ain't, he ain't play playing. He was like, look man, these are black people, man. He's so -called, this, this is so called black man and woman, man. Because he's complaining. He said, man, don't send us no more black people over here when we got a whole country full of black people. They would never adopt our customs, no more than they can obtain our complexion. All of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthy black. Russia, Russia. Italy, Spain, France, Sweden, Germany are black. I need you to get this through your mind bone. That in the 1700s, Europe was black. There was still a black king on the throne in 1751. Oh, we're going to read it, but I need you to I need you to meditate on this with due meditation. In 1751, there's still a brother on the throne. King George is a brother. They rode up on you in 1492. So who rode up on you? And in 1751, there's still a brother on the throne. So what was the 1776 Declaration of Independence really about? I mean, we got a lot to dig on in this book, but we have to dig on it with perspective. We got to dig on it with perspective when we get into the history of the United States. Because when we go into it in part two, then you're going to have perspective of what's happening in the 1700s that they're trying to get 
separation from the black King George. That when we talk about black King George having dragons, you gonna understand it. it was a dragon war when they tried to break free from King George in 1776. And that's love to Miss D in the copper color awakening. But this is Drop Nation. Teamwork makes a dream work. So these whites just got freedom from blacks, black royalty in Europe. Now, whether you call it Edom or Moab or whatever, these were other black people. But we were already at war with them. And when you get into the Rus and study Russia, Russia, when you study the Picts, then you know that this Pict or Russia, Russia, or the clan Seal, Andreas, or Andros, these houses were already at war with other houses claiming different titles of Roman or Romani. That the war was already taking place here in the Forbidden Histories of America by Daniel Lowe. Talking about Kalelus and Sylvanus Totexas, Sylvanus Og, who is Solomon the Builder in the 700s in America. And by the time King James colonizes and puts patents on you through the London Company and the Hudson Bay Company, all right, <laughs> it's already gone down. He's just putting final little stamps on it. This is the, the end of their situation as they're losing power. And now there's a, a declaration of a, a, a breaking away in 1776. They just got free from black people in Europe. And black people are the ones that originally rolled, rolled up on you in the 1400s. And the white man just got in where they fit in. The whites just got in where they fit in. And they just got power in the late 1700s. But they want you to believe they always had power. Because, you know, the longer you can show you have power, the more powerful you become. And the more it seems like we can't break their power because they've always had power no Europe looked like what Benjamin Franklin in his essay called America as a land of opportunity in 1751 all of Africa Asia and America are black all of Africa Asia and America are black no 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 we're just you know, Native American proxies, we're just a real light tone, but we're going to call it copper tone. You know what a copper penny look like. You know what ruddy look like. This is not to boast with our, you know what I'm saying, our heritage. This is so that we can wake up. We are reacting to a war. Get with it or get left on. Whose side are you on? Because there ain't no lukewarm in this. You don't want to be on the side of the Hebrews, the Nagas, the so-called black man in America waking up to their heritage. <coughs> that this ain't no mythology. That King David, that this Naga is what the Crusades is all about. This is the last noble image of the Negro. With his crown, with his scepter. And it just happened hundreds of years ago. It just happened. Not no BCs. It just happened in the 1200s, man. 13, 1400s, man. And in 1751, what? All of Africa, Asia, and America are black, says Benjamin Franklin. Including Russia. Black. Italy, black, Spain, black, France, black, the indigenous Franks, the France, the people of France sued the government to get their title of, of French and they won. So when you say French, you are just referring to the indigenous blacks in France, the Franks, the Rus, the Russians, the Templars. The Swedes, the Sweden, the Germans are black. 
The principal white, says Benjamin Franklin. The principal rock, the, the only whites, all right? W-I-G-H-T. <laughs> the only whites are made up of the Saxons and the English. The Scots, Welsh, and Irish are not Saxons or English. So the Scots are black. Remember, Scotia, Princess Scotia, was a daughter of one of the Hebrew pharaohs in Egypt. So one of the pharaoh's daughters, and this pharaoh was a Hebrew, had a daughter named Scotia, and she was copper colored, black, swarthy. And Scotland is named after this black princess or queen, Scotia. The Scots, Welsh, and the Irish are all black, originally. See, when you say it, what time it is, all the hijacks that are claiming your titles have to now look at you and tell them who, who they really are. That's why it took all of them to make a confederacy to put all of us asleep. So that they can all claim all these titles that are all us. So where are they coming from? Well, that's the $64 million question. Because if these so-called whites are not Germans and Swedes and French and Spaniards and Italians and Russians, they're not Americans, they're not Asians, and they're damn sure not Africans. They're, they're not Scottish, they're not Welsh, and they're not Irish. And you telling me that the only whites are coming out of England? I can't give them England. I, I can't. I can't give them. I can't give them none of this stuff, man. So they got to tell us who they are, man. It says when Benjamin Franklin writes this essay. When Benjamin Franklin writes this essay, I need you to hear this clearly. When Benjamin Franklin writes this essay in 1751, the black German king. King George II is sitting on the throne of England. So in 1751, a black man was on the throne of England. That should connect you to who King James is in the 1600s. And we're going to get that for the dismount. That this was another black king. He doesn't have to be an Israelite king. He's possibly a Hebrew king. But all the Hebrew people are not Israel, right? We have Edom, right? Not all the Shem are Israel, right? We have Moab, right? And Ammon, right? I mean, Noble Drew Ali told you that. Noble Drew Ali is the prophet of the Moabites. Man, go get that series. The Moabite. The, uh... The Baphomet of Bay Luce, all that. It's a, I think a seven-part series, man. We had a good time with that. But we, we read a lot of Noble Drew Ali's drop, and it's love to the, to, it's, it's, it's love to the, to, to, to the flow. I don't know. I am. It's love to it, but at the same time, he's calling Joshua the Joshua the robber. You know what I mean? So it's almost, it's only so much a high we can give that. You know what I mean? When you're calling Joshua, who led our people to the promised land, Joshua the robber, then you're not on the side of Israel. You're not on the side of the priest king Preston John. So these, this is the war that's coming to light that's really going on. But he has great recon and he makes it, he brings it into, you know, a, a, a clearer perspective. So love to Noble Drew Ali, love to all that. But at the same time, man, he's the prophet of Moab. And what do you have here again? A black king is still on the throne, King George in 1751. So this is why, you know what I'm saying, we keep being attacked. This is why we keep, you know, getting our YouTube page attacked and our website attacked because this is the recon that they don't want you to know that they're hiding in Harvard, man. But Todd Battle's going to make sure you got the job, man. You know, just to conclude, man, in a familiar place. Just to conclude in a familiar place, and we're gonna get back in this document, man. Come back with the press the press the hour, press the John studies, and all that beautiful thing, man. Like higher marks say, it's a beautiful thing. 
Remember this, uh, this is the colonial period. This is a whole chart of the colonial period. What's it say down here? The colonial period. And you're gonna see uh, over here in the corner. This is the 1600s. And you got 1603, that's what the three is for. James the first. And it's the colonization of what? The Aboriginals of America. Let's get it, man. Let's get this drizzle. Make our dismount right here. All right, well, let me see. All right, let's do it right here. <laughs> Cause the drop is real when it comes to what happened in 1606 now that you know that there's a black king on the throne in 1751 pause it read it it says the 10th of april 1606 was full of fate in the destinies of the western continent <coughs> that's you you're the western continent supposedly you know we know that this is really the East, not the West. Our maps have been flipped upside down. It says, on that day, King James I issued two great patents directed to the men of his kingdom, authorizing them to possess and colonize. Papal bull, right? You do possess and colonize, invade, search out, vanquish, capture, Put these people in perpetual slavery. He's following up the Pope's doctrine in 1452 and giving you a new test. Bringing it to these lands. Bringing another Messiah to these lands. Instead of the Creator being your Savior, you have a new Savior. Oh, he was sacrificed. Nah, fool. You were sacrificed. You were the sacrifice. And they don't come through Jesus. They have to come through you. All of you have been replaced by one man in the New Testament. You are the son. The son of the creator, the firstborn. Israel, they come through you. Let's go. On that day, King James I issued two great patents directed to men of his kingdom, authorizing them to possess and colonize all that portion of North America laying between the 34th and 35th parallels of latitude. Again, this is King James in April 1606. This is the 1611 edition. One of the first, if not the first, of the King James editions. So in 1606, he comes to colonize you, invade, Search out and vanquish you. He gets your documents, remixes it, and packages it together with a new test, a new savior, and a new perspective in 1611. We're just talking 1606. The 10th of April, 1606, was full of fate and the destinies of the Western continent. On that day, King James I issued two great patents directed to men of his kingdom, authorizing them to possess and colonize all the portions of North America, 
laying between the 34th and 35th parallels of latitude. The immense tract thus embraced extended from the mouth of Cape Fear River to the Passamaquoddy Bay and Wester to the Pacific Ocean. That's California, right? The first patent was granted to the Association of Nobles, Gentlemen, and Merchants resided at London or Babylon and called the London Company. So he first issued the patent to the London Company to colonize you, Naga. The followers of who? Priest King Prester John. I mean, damn. It, it got to be real to you at some point when you know that the Euphrates River is in America. When Benjamin Franklin is telling you that all of America is black, swarthy, copper colored. And when the races of men is telling you that these original inhabitants, the true Americans, the copper colored Indians, are headed by Prester John. That means that King James was against King David, which is why he gave you a new test, a remix. What else would Edom do? Have you, haven't you read Psalms 83? Psalms 82? Talking about the Confederacy against you? So King James ordered the first patent granted to the London Company while the second instrument was issued to a similar body which had been organized at Plymouth in southwest England and which bore the name of the Plymouth Company. So you got the London Company and the Plymouth Company to the former co corporation was assigned all the region between the 34th and 38 degrees of latitude and to the latter the track extended from the 41st to the 45th degree, the narrow belt of 3 degrees lying between the 38th and 41st parallels was to be equally open to the colonies of either company, but no settlement of one party was to be made within less than 100 miles of the nearest settlement of the other, man. This is King James, man, in 1606, man. We just... You just saw the chart in 1603. You just saw the chart in 1603 of him literally taking a trip. I'm trying to do this without ripping my book, man. Oh, damn. Oh, man. All right, man. It's ripping. It's ripping. I got to show you this, man. I got to tape it back together. All right, so this is the period, the period of voyages and discovery. All right, so it's all about. Oh, it's ripping apart. It's all about America. The period of voyages and discovery. All right, and what do you have? What do you have right here? James the first. All right, you got his son, Charles. You got the 1600s. And this is the period of voyages and discovery of what? The period of voyages and discovery, A.D. 1000 to 1620. And all these are the voyages from 1000 to 1620. And right here you have, it says a three, right? 1603, James the first. King James. <coughs> Say no play, play. Oh, my page is falling out because there ain't no play, play. <laughs> Hold on, man. Find my spot. Alright, so we saw this chart already. We got James again mentioned in this colonial chart. Right up top. James the first. 
So you tell me what it do, man. Hey, man, we just talking about the Aboriginal. Pages that fell out. <laughs> My stuff falling apart. See, see what y'all doing, man. I get, I get, I get too, uh, too excited, man, for my own dismount. All right, there we go. All right, so in 1606, we got King James the first issues two great patents. All right, <coughs> two great patents. One is the London Company. One to the Plymouth Company, all right? And then they got all these degrees of latitude from the 38th degree of latitude to the ladder track extending to the 41st and the 45th degree of latitude. And it says only the London Company was successful under, under its charter in planting an American colony. And the last thing I'll show you is this right here, all right? You can see these are the colonies that were originally set up through the London Company and Hudson Bay. Or Plymouth Company, excuse me. London Company, Plymouth Company is on top. All right. And all that right there is at uh, Florida, all the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get to the Virginia drop. We're going to get to the Massachusetts drop. We're going to get to the New York drop. But it all starts right here, man. <laughs> this, is, this is the page that remains after I take my other pages back together. We got the Algonquins are taller and lighter in build. All right, eyes jet black, hair black, beard black, skin copper colored, red dish black, cinnamon hued, brown, high cheekbones, <laughs> forehead and skull variable in shape and proportion, hand and feet. Small body, body lithe, lithe, but not strong, especially sinister, or rarely dignified and noble. See how they trying to take down the people? Now you tell me, is this the Naga? This is what you think about when they talk about Algonquin, right? The copper color race, is this the copper color race is found here? Is this what Benjamin Franklin was talking about? <coughs> Is this, what, is this what Franklin was talking about when he says that all of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthy black? Is this swarthy black? Is this what the uh, is this what the races of man, the dark races of man that Todd Battle dropped on us about the peopling of America, thoroughbred theorists, copper color Indians, thoroughbred thoroughbred theorists, namely the cop. Named that the copper color Indians, the true Americans, were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there, headed by, I suppose, Preston John. You think these are the people of Preston John? Is this the dark, swarthy, Naga, Negro, American, following Preston John? When you use your senses, the reality lights up in your face, ball. If this is the king of the Indians, then this can't be the true Indian. Much a hive, aqua tie for the drop. Much a hive drop nation for remembering who you are. It's time to get your swords again. It's time to be knighted again. And this is our reality together, man. Much of High Drop Nation. This is just uh, the first of many, man, in our third wave here. Remember, man, this is for the prisoners. This is for the captives. And what I go through is what you're going through. And what I went through, what I went through, you was there with me. 
and I felt the energy, I felt the power. And right now it's our time to powwow up. It's our time to feel the powwow, to come together, to not be divided, not let no energies, no static, no naysayers, no fault finders, and no false witnesses with false wits ever divide the truth, the drop, the water that streams, the water that connects, to go back to our Rorema, our connection, our Eden. A hop to y'all look out for Preston Chai 37. And a hop to my dragon sponsors on the wall and all that all those that's going on our flow. And tune in, man, this Friday to the Ether Show, the Shabbat Show, Friday at 9 o'clock Pacific in the Ether Squad. Go ahead and gear up, man. It's gonna be a beautiful trek in the mountain of Rorema, the tree of life. Allah.